sorry ladies for the delay it's now I know past even five past six but it took me longer to eat my dinner than I anticipated um, so sorry I'm a few minutes late um, it's really really hot in here they say that um, temperatures in the UK are going to be breaking records of ever recorded temperatures um, sort of up to about 38 39 degrees which is just unprecedented for us and we are all wilting um, but and as of course as you would expect on a day like today I am trying to pack in 101 things I've got a meeting to go to more or less as soon as I finish these lives today which is why I needed to swallow my dinner literally before I came on and joined you so if I was warm before I really really am warm now but I've left my fan on so hopefully if it all goes quiet um yeah, somebody try and contact somebody. I'm sort of flaked out on the floor, but hopefully it won't come to that. I've got a cup of tea just here that should keep me going. They say that you should drink hot drinks to sort of kickstart your um, your body's heat resisting mechanism. So um, we will test it. I've had my hot dinner. I'm not going to have a hot drink. So in the theory, I should be really, really cool by the end of it. Um, but welcome. My name is Helen Jennings. I'm a stamping up demonstrator based here in the UK. And on a Thursday evening, come snow, hail or extreme temperatures, I try and come in and join you and do some crafting. And that's the plan for this evening. So do come on, do say hello and do give me your top tips for keeping cool in this hot weather. So um, particularly if you're not from the UK, if you're from a country where... Uh, um, it is normally quite hot. Give us your top tips. We need them, ladies and gents. We're need, in need of your top tips for keeping your cool in hot weather. And um, because, of course, we're really not geared up for it. We're, we're not used to it, so we haven't got all of the uh, the equipment and the uh, gizmos in place. So uh, somebody said earlier that our, apparently our blood is too thick that's what it is so that's why we can't cope with it give us a bit of snow not too much because we come to a halt if it's too much snow as well um, but give us the cold and the wet and the damp we're used to that we have webbed feet but um, extreme heat and we're all melting um, the door is blowing a little bit behind me um, so apologies for that so yes, do come on, say hello, tell me your top tips for keeping cool in this extreme heat um, and um, let's do some crafting because regardless of what the heat is, we're definitely going to be doing some of that. Now, I've got a couple of classes coming up over the next couple of days. So tomorrow afternoon, um, I've got a stamp stack using the Bird Ballad Suite. So that's quite exciting. I'm looking forward to that. That's a really pretty sweet lovely stamp sets and gorgeous papers so i am really looking forward to doing that tomorrow afternoon and then saturday we've got an all day class christmas in july um hopefully it's not going to be quite so hot on saturday but still a bit warmer than your average christmas i'm sure but um we will make sure we've got plenty of cool drinks to keep us going um as we craft throughout the day from 10 till 3 so um, that will be another fun class so some exciting things coming up over the weekend um but for now we're going to be playing with this woven heirlooms suite and that is indeed what we did on monday so on monday morning we created this card that we cased from the catalogue and I think it's yes buried underneath there under my bits of paper so there is the card that we cased on Monday um, and inspired by the fact that I'd used that oval frame um, on Monday one of the cards for tomorrow afternoon is also using that oval frame and I'm not sure how well that will pick up on the video but um, it is cut in um, soft suede card and then I have rubbed some champagne um, shimmer paint all over the top of it to give that a bit of a, a, bit of a glow. Um, and it's quite pretty, quite pleased with how that came out. So that's one of the cards for tomorrow. And again, we're using that oval frame. So I thought it only right this evening that we got to use the um, rectangular frame and we shall be doing that in a little while. So obviously I'm on a bit of a time frame today. Um, so I have done some pre-preparation for some of my uh, for my projects this, uh, this evening. 
um, but hopefully we shall enjoy having a bit of a play and we shall be having a play with some of the paper Now my paper pack has nearly all gone um, but I have used some of it this evening but I thought I'd just share with you these are my little paper samples that I made up um, as the catalogue was launched and you can see that there is these sort of um, beautiful patterns and things on here that give this sort of feel that's a gorgeous one I love that one give the feel of woven fabrics and upholstery fabrics and rugs and those sorts of things um, and that is indeed where the inspiration came from for these papers and this stamp set um, so yeah those sort of woven threads literally the rugs and the upholstery fabrics and those sorts of things um, the door has now blown open and Mike is watching the television in the other room so let me just go and shut the door again because we don't really want to be able to hear whatever it is that he's got on the television especially as it's likely to be sort of shooting and blood and gore and things um, so um, that's, that's that shut out for a little bit unless the wind blows the door open again so these are the beautiful papers and we are going to be using quite a bit of the paper this evening um, because we've got a couple of projects different things you can do with your DSPs other than just using them for mats in the background and the other things we've got in this suite we have got this um, lovely lid and thread woven th um, threads trim and this is the one where we um, we can take this little um, thread just here and pull that out so where that thread is sticking out just there we can pull out that thread and then it becomes um, tassels and here are the tassels that were left as a result of pulling that thread out on Monday and we'll be using those in one of our projects today um, there's also sequins that go with this suite they're absolutely gorgeous in those beautiful soft in colours there's two 3D embossing folders one is the oval and one is the rectangle and they match beautifully with the two dies which is the rectangular frame and the oval frame so on Monday we use the oval frame today we're going to be using the rectangular one and that embossing folder and then you've got this stamp set that again has got these sort of woven images in here these nice little swirls and things and a really beautiful font for these greetings and things so those are the things that we are going to be using to create our projects this evening so I did wet my Stimply Chamois I don't know if it's still wet and um, that will remain to be seen it's drying out quicker than I can speak um, you need to spritz it or something to keep it going right okay so let's have a look at our two projects where shall we start I think we'll start with this bottom one so in here I have got some of the enamel faceted um, gems in these in colors so these are all in colors we've got the terracotta tile bar um, the Seaside Spray, the Rococo Rose, the Purple Posy and the Pretty Peacock. We've got our thread that we've uh, ta say taken that bottom thread out of which we used on Monday and we've now got our tassels. I've got a card base that I've made out a Pretty Posy card and this is a long ways um, C6 card so I took my piece of A4 and I scored it at 14.9 and cut it at 10 and a half so um, it's going the other way because it just gives that a sort of more firm base to sit on when it's standing on your mantelpiece I've got a strip of paper so this is the paper that's got these um, diamond pattern on one side but we're going to use the terracotta tile side I've got another strip of the paper that we're going to use the pattern side and I've got a piece of purple posy cardstock and then I've got little squares, five centimetre squares of DSP. And what we're going to do with these, we're going to do some tea bag folding. Um, now, I don't know if you've ever done tea bag folding. There are lots and lots of different um, ways that you can fold your paper with tea bag folding. And you can, if you look on YouTube and Pinterest and things, you'll find lots of hints and I'm sure you can get books and all sorts of things but we're going to do quite a simple fold so we're going to take our square and we're going to fold it point to point hi Bonnie and then we're going to fold it the other way point to point 
and then we're going to fold it in half this way. So now we have those score lines and all we're going to do is we're going to tuck in that side just there and tuck in that side just there and form a triangle that sort of looks a bit like that. And then with this other piece of paper we're going to do exactly the same thing only this time we're going to have the terracotta tile um, pattern facing upwards. So diagonal to diagonal, turn it round and then fold it in half lengthways and then just push down on that fold just there and push down on that side just there and we have a little triangle. Now I've already done that with six little squares and I've stuck those six little squares together. So now we will add the two that we've just created to the six I did earlier. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that fold just there and put in a little dollop of glue and the glue is so warm it is just very very runny. We're going to tuck that in there like that and then we're going to open this up. Hello Taz, Taz has just come in from the garden, I don't know where he's been hiding. I think he's found himself a bit of a shady nook. We're going to fold that in there and then to complete the, well it's not quite a circle, but to complete the round we're going to put a little bit of glue in there and tuck that one in there. So then we have these eight triangles going all the way round and you can open these up a little bit if you want to puff them out a little bit or you can have them lying relatively flat. You can open them up a bit like this if you want it a little bit more 3D. So teabag folding is really sort of like origami, it just is um, creating the different patterns and as I said there's lots of different ways that you can fold them to get lots and lots of different, different patterns. That is just a really really basic teabag fold. So we've folded all those round stuck all those in place. Now we're going to put one of these faceted gems in the middle. Do we want to, yes I think we perhaps will go purple posy in the middle there just to add in a little spot in the middle. So there we go. There's our tea bag folded paper and of course you can do the really lovely thing about these being double sided papers um, is that you, you could have done them so that they're all the same, so with one pattern, but it's quite nice to be able to alternate those colours. So let's take our paper that we've got just here and the dog has come to sit himself at my feet. I think he's perhaps feeling as if it's all it's all a bit much, isn't it, has he? And he he's getting quite an old boy now, so it's uh, this sort of extreme heat and being messed about is just altogether too much for him. Right, I'm going to take this really long um, stamp here. I shall need my really long block. Sorry, Tazzy, I'll try not to drop those on your head because you won't appreciate that. There we go. Oh, apologies, I just caught the wire. And let's ink this up, and I'm inking it up with terracotta tile ink. And this has already got like a bit of a lined pattern on here, but I'm just going to sort of accentuate it slightly by adding this stamp on the top. Oh, we've now got some thunder. No wonder the dog has come in. He must have known that was on its way. Um, and I'm going to use this thinking of you sentiment just here. <laughs> the dog is now actually underneath my legs so if I do go flying I do apologise he's now sitting on my feet. He really does not like thunder and lightning. What I may have to do is summon the aid of Mike in a minute to come and he's shaking. He's sitting on my feet and he's literally 
shaking. He really does not like thunder. Right, I'm going to cut that at a bit of an angle. If you'll excuse me just one moment, I'm going to um, summon some um, support for the dog. Come on then. Mike. Okay, that's um, that's that's doggy care taken care of. Apologies for that. Okay, so, um, so yes, if you are watching, do come on and say hello, and do tell me how you're managing to keep cool in this hot weather. I'm going to snip that off at a bit of an angle. And what did we do with our piece of paper? We've got our little bit of paper just here that is. Um, it's matching the patterned paper in our sort of um, medallion. So I think we'll just do a banner end on that piece of paper. And we'll add that in there as well. Okay, so I'm going to add bit of my very wet runny glue. Oh, got lightning going on now. And stick that on there. And then I think we'll take a couple of dimensionals and lift this up. <laughs> so today's live is going to be accompanied by thunder and lightning and rain on the conservatory roof. Right, and now we will stick this entire mat onto the front of this card. We'll come this way, I'm going to need to trim that off on the other end. Hopefully the rain will come a bit earlier today, not like the other evening where it was the middle of the night and I know a lot of people had a disturbed night's rest or had very little rest as a result of, uh, of the rain. Right, I'm actually going to run a little bit of double-sided tape along here. Ooh, managed to tear the top off of that, that wasn't helpful, but never mind. That will hopefully be covered up with our tassels. And we will add our tassels in just there. Trim that off. And then last but not least, we will put our um, medallion on there. And I think we'll perhaps stick that on with some glue dots. because we don't necessarily want it raised up anymore. I'm going to put a few on there just to hold it down in place. So there we are. So that's something a little bit different, a little bit of tea bag folding with our, um, our designer series paper, the woven threads designer series paper, some of our tassels on there little bit of stamping in the background here um, and an interesting colour combination, quite a pretty com colour combination of that terracotta tile with the purple posy. So, and those are both colours obviously that are picked up in this paper. There's a bit of seaside spray in there as well but we've not used any of that. I could come in on the sort of top here and um, add in, in fact I might do that, add in a little um, one of these little swirls. In this sort of top corner.
think, started, so I'll carry on. And you wish you'd done something before you stuck that down. We used the purple posy in the middle there, didn't we? So perhaps we'll just put a couple of the small terracotta tile dots on there. So there we are, a bit of tea bag folding. Just something you can do with your papers that's a little bit different than just putting a, a mat in the background. So for our other card, we're also going to use some papers. And I'm just flicking down slightly on my laptop. And this time we're going to do some weaving. So I've already started, as you can see, and this is the card that we're going to use to do our um, embossing on a frame. So I've got a, a rectangular frame already cut out there and we will emboss that in just a second. But to start with, let's continue with this weaving that I started earlier. <clears throat> so all I've done is cut some, there are approximately one and a half centimetre wide strips of DSP. And they're around about sort of 15 centimetres long, give or take. Um, it wasn't a particularly exact science. So I've, I've got two of the patterns that I've laid the strips down um, this way. And there's eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I'll tell a fifth. There's seven of those. So we've got seven strips coming down this way. We've got four of the blue one and three of the more pinky shade. And then we've got some strips coming this way. And actually, this is the same sheet of paper, which is just either side. So one is this sort of terracotta tile um, sort of stamped effect. And the other is this purple posy floral effect on the other side of that. So I've started with the darker one and gone over and under and over and under and over and under. And the next one down, I've gone under and over and under and over. And as you do, I'm sure that we've all at some point done some weaving so we're just going to put a couple more strips in here and I'm just going under and over sort of wiggled them around until they were positioned how we want them and then all I did was I took um, my pickup tool and some glue dots and I've just added a glue dot on each end. So for this end, it needs to be under there. And I've just secured the ends down. If I need to secure anything else down a bit later on, I will do. But for now, that is sufficient. And one just there. So the next strip is this darker strip. And that one's going to, rather than go under over, that's going to go over under and of course you can make you can use all sorts of things to do weaving you, we could have used some card that we'd previously run through an embossing folder you could use it to make baskets and again we'll put a glue dot on that end The blue dots are getting towards the end of the roll, which is going to run out first. And we'll put a glue dot on that end. And then this last bit, um, we're going to have, so that's going under and over. Again, I'll just add in a couple of blue dots to 
anchor it down. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just trim off these end pieces. So we've got a little bit overhanging this end, so we'll do the same with this end. And I'm not ever so worried about them being exact. I quite like the sort of rusticy feel of it. Well, the thunder likes it too. So what I've got here is I've got a Rococo Rose card base. And I've actually cut this card base so that it is five by seven inches. So I took a piece of A4 card and I've cut it so that it's 10 inches that way, seven inches that way, and scored in half at the five inch mark to create a five by seven card. And that's another um, fairly regular card size that you can get envelopes for. Well, of course, you can always create your own envelopes and I'm going to pop some glue on there well, actually before I do that I'm actually going to take this sort of small um, woven sort of it almost looks like a mosaic effect almost like a mosaic tile sort of effect so I'm going to take that and I'm going to take some the cocoa rose ink And stick my finger in the ink pad but that's by the by let's ink up this I'm going to stamp a little bit that way on there and that way on there and that way on there and that way on there just in those four corners as I'm then going to put my um, woven piece on a bit of an angle so let's add some dots of glue to the back of our woven piece and of course you know it um, the other side looks really lovely as well this sort of um, Sahari sand colour here is really quite hessian looking so just put some blobs of glue on there to anchor that down the same I'm going to place it on at a bit of an angle and I will need to trim off the edges in a minute so let's press that down and find my snips and we'll turn our card over and just trim off the pin pieces that are sticking over the edge Okay, so there we have our woven DSP on the back there. A bit of stamping around the corner. And now we're going to take, she says with great confidence, our frame. Where's that gone? Just here. So I've already cut the rectangular frame using that um, die, um, but I haven't yet embossed it so let's do that now let's find the rectangular one the oval one really won't work properly will it and let's line this up inside there now like we did with the oval one you want to make sure that you've got it lined up and this is possibly slightly easier to line up hello Carol hope everybody's feeling warm enough not had any top tips yet on how you're keeping cool in this hot weather does that mean nobody is managing to keep cool in this hot weather as we said on Monday it is worth taking your time lining this up. I think that's about right and I know what I didn't get out of my bag that was my um, embossing mat let's see if we can see that 
so yes it has been really warm today i'm sure like me you've all been all been suffering so uh, yeah so do come on and tell us top tips the way you found to keep cool today so what we're going to need for embossing with this so this is one of the new um 3d embossing folders so in order to um get the best effect with that what i have found is i use my big shot platform my embossing folder i use this now retired um, rubber embossing mat and a plastic plate now stamping up have brought out a plate that you can use with these embossing folders and your big shot machine so um, there is a solution if you haven't got one of these rubber mats or if you would like um, the plate anyway then they are available but for now I'm using what I've got and it seems to work quite well and obviously you know these work with any machine so it is just about finding what the right solution is for your machine so let's lift that out and hopefully you're going to be able to see that that is a beautifully embossed frame just there now what I'm going to do apart from making you wobble is I'm going to take back out the um, terracotta ink it's right I'm trying not to get ink on my card so let's open up this terracotta tile ink pad and I've got a terracotta tile sponge dauber so I've got my sponge dauber that's labelled up with terracotta tile and I've obviously stuck my finger in there and I'm going to come round and I'm going to sponge on some ink now obviously these ink pads are still relatively new so they're still quite inky but that really makes that embossed image pop when you add that ink on there we go let's take my simply chamois in its now not wet but mildly damp state and we'll just use it to give that a bit of a rub so we now have our terracotta tile frame that we're going to sit on the top there um, but the other thing that I've cut somewhere is a piece of vellum that I had cut to size to sit in my frame so where's that gone if not we'll just find another piece but I looked at it just now there has to be something doesn't there ladies that goes missing during our lives well I think we'll just cut another piece and then the first piece will miraculously materialise. So let's pop these inks away just for now. Now this frame measures approximately mm, just under eight centimetres by just under ten and a half. So if I cut this piece of vellum, so it's eight. that once more with feeling with the cutting blade rather than the scoring blade by 10 that will sit on the inside of our frame hopefully without poking out and then I'm going to take the greeting that says wishing you a day of love and joy I think that's a lovely greeting And find a block and I think in terracotta tile again no actually I think I'm going to do it in black I'm going to do it in stays on now obviously in this heat stays on is not going to stay dry very long 
but it does tend to stay a little bit drier on the um, vellum than it would on cardstock. So let's try and eyeball that in the middle. Fabulous. And if we need to, we can trim our vellum down a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll put some snail on the back here. And we'll line our greeting up in that vellum. And trim off this excess on this side. Just use some dimensionals just to lift that frame up, making sure that they're not peeking through the vellum. half an eye on the time I think we're okay um, now I've got a variety of ribbons and things here but I don't know that I'm going to want such a wide ribbon so I've dug out nearly all of the in colour ribbons with the exception of the um, pretty peacock because I felt that that would be too dark and I've also picked out this one here which is the um, Rococo Rose Ruched Ribbon. Um, although these are pretty, I'm not sure that they might not be a bit too much. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, in fact I might do a double bow in linen thread. So I'm just going to fold that linen thread in half, tie a bow with it. Tweak that slightly. And then we can pull that one straight. Yes, I think that's what that needed, wasn't it? Didn't want to be quite so much ribbon as um, the other ribbon would give us. I could have um, cut just the edge trim bit off of one of these. I could have just cut off that trim bit and used that, but I quite like that um, linen thread. I do like a bit of linen thread. So that's, um, and it sort of still is in keeping with that whole threads theme. And we'll add that on there and then finally I think for this one we will add in a few of the sequins just to scatter about the place so this paper has got a really pretty feel to it it's um it's not overly flowery or and some of the colours you really could use quite easily for masculine cards. I'm just going to put a few little blobs of ink, um, ink glue down there and add a few random sequins on. So you could, you know, very definitely use some of this for um, masculine cards, except certainly that sort of dark, pretty peacock colours. Um, just looking around to see if I've got it's right in front of me, look if I can see the... So we'll, we'll add in a few different colours of these sequins because all of these colours do show up in that paper. Um, I 
there's a pink one over here. A sort of, yeah, a sort of dark pink terracotta tile type colour. Another blue one. Um, paler pink down the bottom here, which is sort of more that Rococo rose sort of colour. There's a pretty peacock type one. Another more terracotta tile type colour. Yeah, but we perhaps just need one more over here. Just for a bit of balance, if we can get a blob of glue to come out. I want a little blob of glue, not a big massive blob, please. Thank you. And we'll go with one of these pretty posy ones just there. Oh, it's well and truly stuck to my finger rather than the project. That's it. Okay. So that's quite pretty. So there's a couple of different ways of taking your DSPs um, and using them to create cards. So we've done a bit of stamping, we've done a bit of die cutting and embossing and a bit of sponging, but we've also done some paper weaving and some tea bag folding and there's that lovely tassely trim where we took the thread out the other day so two very different cards um using the woven thread suite so again another very versatile suite once you start playing with it um does that seeping come off of there or is it just stuck to my finger and if we add those to the the robin that we created, I used that frame for, and the card that we cased on Monday. There's lots of really lovely elements in this um, suite that you're going to be able to use time and time again for lots and lots of cards. So if you would like to get your hands on this suite, I shall be posting links to my shop. Um, do go along hurry along and add it whether you want the entire suite with stamps and dies or whether you just like those dies and those um, embossing folders whether you really like the pretty colors in that paper whatever elements it is that have caught your eye do pop on over to my shop and make sure you pop those in your basket so i hope you've enjoyed joining me this evening along with thunder lay and lightning a bit of rain scared dog we've had it all this evening um, and uh, but I'm going to rush off now um, to make it to my meeting um, and I will be back hopefully a little bit more leisurely and a little bit cooler on Monday morning so enjoy your weekend until then